now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Faber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. An episode of Mutual's Crime Club, as it was originally broadcast 75 years ago, April 10th, 1947, The Grey Mist Murders. Thanks for tuning in on this Sunday, 10th day of April, 100th day of the year, and we have 265 days remaining. A uh, day after his surrender to Union forces, Confederate General Robert E. Lee addressed his troops for the last time on this date in 1865. It was on this date also in 1865, the last photograph of Abraham Lincoln taken. Uh, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals founded on this date in 1866 in New York City. The Titanic left port in Southampton, England for her first and final voyage on this date in 1912. Uh, it was on this date in 1925, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald first published. The Civilian Conservation Corps created in 1933 as part of President Roosevelt's New Deal. Henry Ford II named Executive Vice President of Ford Motor Company in 1944. In 1970, Paul McCartney announced the Beatles had broken up. I always used to do sort of an interview a week almost for a newspaper or for something, you know, just to keep my name in the in the headlines, you know, because, I don't know, you just go through a phase of wanting to be up there, you know, in the, in the limelight. Well, I'm going through a phase now where I don't want to be in the limelight. The breakup caused by legal and financial conflicts as well as those of artistic vision. 48% of Americans polled in a Gallup poll on this date in 1970 approved of President Nixon's Vietnam policy. It was in 1971 in an attempt to thaw relations with the U.S. The People's Republic of China hosted the U.S. table tennis team for a week-long visit back in 1971. Volkswagen became the first non-American automobile manufacturer to build cars in the U.S. on this date in 1978. In 2006, hundreds of thousands protested H.R. 4437, the Sensenbrenner Bill, the Border Protection, Anti-Terrorism, and Illegal Immigration Control Act of 2005 in cities across the U.S. The bill would pass the House but not the Senate. Passing away on this date in history, actress Linda Darnell, actress Kay Medford, Lovey Howell on Gilligan's Island, Natalie Shaper, Sam Kinison, I knew a friend of his, Carl LeBeau, and uh, Carl was such a wonderful comedian, uh, Sam Kinison, passing away on this date back in 1992. Wilma Flintstone, Jean Vanderpile, also uh, Frank Burns from MASH, Larry Linville, the woman who first talked to sang about the locomotion, little Eva, and uh, Julius Shula, Sugar Baker from Designing Women, Dixie Carter. All those folks passing away on this date in history. Commodore Matthew Perry born on this date, as was the English founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth. Journalist and publisher Joseph Pulitzer born on this date. The man who had the wonderful instrumental about the quiet village, Martin Denny. Uh, this is also the birth date of Harry Morgan. Well, I think uh, mostly that was uh, on my part. I was always joking around. Sometimes I joked, I, I played it a little too lightly, and Jack would say, hold it, you know. It's not all that funny. And you'd do another take. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's sort of uh, what I was there for, to be a, a counterpart. To, you know, Jack was very steadfast and loyal and uh, heavy-handed in a, in a certain way, you know, because of the position he had uh, in, the, in the character and, and in the whole process. And I was sort of a counterpoint, I think. At least that's the way I felt. And he seemed to go along with it. Through much of his radio days, he was billed as Henry Morgan, which was his real name, but uh, then when he got into television, he would be billed as Harry Morgan. And uh, it was uh, he, he well, early TV. He was in Pete and Gladys. Of course, there he was talking about his time with Jack Webb on Dragnet. And uh, then he would be known to most of us as his role on MASH. 
uh, Harry Morgan, born on this date in history. Also actor Chuck Connors from The Rifleman. Sheb Woolley, very, very funny man who uh, uh, was also known in country circles as Ben Colder. Did lots of satirical stuff. Uh, he was born on this date in history. Uh, Junior Samples, another funny country fellow. Hi, friend. Honest is a day as long samples here. Folks, I don't mind telling you I made a bundle pushing used cars. And starting this weekend, I'm passing my profits on to you. Come on down to the lot and ask one of our salesmen out of on parole to work out some terms for you. That's BR549. And hold down the collect calls. I'm no Rockefeller, you know. A clip from uh, the old Hee Haw show, Junior Samples, born on this date in history, along with Omar Sharif, David Halberstam, uh, Dandy Don Meredith, and uh, John Madden, who passed away last year. Uh, Frank Caliendo does a wonderful John Madden impression, and uh, he, he, he does that very great. Uh, this is birthday number 70 for actor Steven Seagal. Uh, the R&B producer and musician uh, Babyface Edmund, 63 today. From the Stray Cats, Brian Setzer is 63. Uh, the lady who sang about walking on sunshine, Katrina Leskinich from Katrina and the Wave, 62. R&B singer Kenny Lattimore is 52. NASCAR's Casey Kane is 42. Mandy Moore, you remember her from A Walk to Remember and This Is Us? She has her own star on the Walk of Fame, too. Mandy Moore, 38. From Pretty Little Liars, Shay Mitchell is 35. You remember when he was young in The Sixth Sense and talked about, I see dead people. Well, Haley Joe Osmond is not dead. He's 34. And uh, A.J. McCulloch. Uh, who was in the Goldbergs and schooled, sang with her sister, uh, Allie and AJ. 31 years old today is AJ. Though some of the people who celebrate the 10th day of April is their birthday, and if this is your birthday... Hi, we're the four freshmen, and we just want to say... Happy birthday to you! We go back 75 years, three quarters of a century, to April 10th, 1947. The Crime Club and the Grey Mist Murders on this Sunday Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox here on your favorite radio station. Hi, this is Kyle Horvath with the White Pine County Tourism and Recreation Board. If you want to get away from the big cities and get back to nature this summer, give us a call at 775-289-3720 or visit us online at elynevada.net. There's so much to do and see, I can't mention it in 30 seconds, but check out our website and you'll see what Nevada is really all about. elynevada.net or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Give us a call at 775-289-3720 or visit us online at elynevada.net. I've had to live around smokers all my life, and I don't smoke. And so it always bothered me, and it was something I got used to. But I don't have to get used to it anymore, because in my home, I now have an Eden Pure thunderstorm air purifier. It uses oxy technology. It destroys viruses, odors, mold, and more. And people all over the nation say these work just... I didn't know it was going to work, but it does. The best part about these air purifiers is they have no filters to replace, and they don't take up counter space. You just plug the whole filter into the wall, and it works. Now, I'm going to tell you how you can save a bunch of money on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack. Whole home protection, three units under 200 bucks. Go to EdenPureDeals.com. That's EdenPureDeals.com. Use my cro- promo code CLASSIC3. You'll save 200 bucks, and shipping is free. Now on this Sunday Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, an episode of The Crime Club, a mutual program from 75 years ago, April 10th, 1947. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is The Crime Club. I'm the librarian... The Grey Mist Murders. Yes, we have that crime club story for you. Come right over. Ah, you're here. 
Here. Good. Take the easy chair by the window. Comfortable? The book is on this shelf. Here it is. The Grey Mist Murders by Constance and Gwynth Little. The very intriguing story of a pleasure cruise that became a floating horror. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. It was late afternoon, and Robert Arnold's ocean-going yacht, The Grey Mist, was already eight hours out of San Francisco and traveling under full steam toward Honolulu. Two of his friends, Peter Condit and Phyllis Marsh, stood by the rail in the bow of the ship, absorbed as they watched the water go by. Then, a few moments later... Nothing to say, Peter? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Phyllis. I was just thinking. <laughs> what about? We ought to get married. What? All of us. A triple wedding. Carla Bray and Bob Arnold, you and Chet Gordon, and... And you and Kay Bayless? Uh-huh. Today, Bob could get the skipper to do the honors. You're slightly off the beam, Peter. I know it sounds crazy, but why not be crazy for a change? Not with my life. I believe in waiting and watching. What for? You're going to marry Chet anyway, aren't you? Maybe. Oh, aren't you sure? I don't know. But you're engaged. So? Peter? Huh? It's Kay. Now you can ask her how she feels about a, a double wedding. All right. Stand by and watch the reaction. Okay, darling, come over here. I've got something to ask you. After me, sweetheart. Oh, Kay! The... Well, Peter, wouldn't you like to know what that was for? What's the idea, Kay? Don't you ever try to make a fool of me again. What are you talking about? Your ex-heartthrob, Peter, Sally Grable. Huh? She's on this boat. And wherever what? she is, she's doing a good job of hiding. Oh, now, listen. We've been sailing for eight hours, and I haven't seen her. Now, where would she be, Peter? No, she isn't. You must have had a bad dream. She is, and I didn't. But, Kay, if you didn't see her, how do you know? This handkerchief was where it shouldn't be. Oh? Recognize it, darling? Let me see it. Be gentle, or you'll rub off the monogram. Where'd you get it, Kay? I found it on the other side of the deck. It was hugging the rail for dear life. Well, I'll be... Of course, dear. The sooner the better. Wait a minute. Yes? Where's the rest of the crowd? Your laugh, mate. Cut it out, Kay! Where's Bob and Chet and Carla? In the lounge, I suppose, giggling over their brandy. Then you showed them this handkerchief, huh? Oh, yes, and they were so surprised. Thanks. I'll see you later. We'll soon find out who's kidding whom. <laughs> oh, it's not really so funny, Kitty. <laughs> you didn't mind laughing, Carla, did you? Oh, just to be so Bob. Well, I've got things to do. Where are you going, Eddie? Down to my cabin. Got a notion I'd like to bathe. <laughs> she really means it, Chet. Oh, no, Bob, that's not what I'm laughing about. Every time I think of that look on Kay's face when she held up that handkerchief. <laughs> it was like murder. Yeah. Oh, poor Pete, what a beating he must be taking now. <laughs> I'm sorry for it. Chet, Chet, did you plant that handkerchief? Oh, no, but I... I, I well, I, I thought it was you. Oh, it wasn't. Carla? No, she doesn't go in for practical jokes. Well, neither does Phyllis. I'm a... Say. I don't believe it, Chet. She can't be on board the Grey Mist. Yeah, but if she is. Oh, if she is. Skipper, this is Mr. Arnold. Uh, did a young lady come on board this morning before I arrived at my party? What? Well, why didn't you tell me? No, oh, very well. She's here, huh? Uh, he thought she was a guest. He told the steward about her. All right, you lugs. Where is she? The voice of doom. Now, now, listen, Pete. You and Chet have got Sally stored away on this boat someplace. Now, bring her out. All right, but we'll have to find her first. Oh, why did you do it? Oh, now, look, Pete. Shut up, Chet. I'm talking to the master now, the boy who handed out the invitation. Sally wasn't invited, Pete. I don't know how she found out about this trip, but she's here and we'll have to do something about it. Sure. Well, just do me one favor. Keep her out of sight. You hot-headed fool. Why don't you listen? Keep her in her cabin locked up until we get to Honolulu. Will you do that one little thing for me? Okay. Thanks. And after that, you can laugh yourself sick. Because Kay and I are checking out as soon as we dock. Well, how about a song, Bob? <laughs> Fool. Uh, something like Old Lang Syne. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? Shut up, Chet. Let's look for Sally. Bob! <laughs> I could do that with another song. Bob! Carla! Bob! What's the matter? Carla! She's in my cabin. In my cabin. Sally? Yes, in the closet on the floor. 
and there's a cord around her neck. What? I, I opened the closet to get a dress for tonight. And I... Chet, no, Chet, stay here with Carla. I'm going downstairs. <laughs> Yes, yes, Dr. Lang. Come down here right away. Call up Ray's cabin. Bob, Chet, what are you doing here? Well, I thought I might be able to help. How's Carla? Oh, she's all right. Uh, Phyllis came into the lounge and I... Well, there's no doubt of that, is there? No. Oh, poor kid. To wind up like that. Who could have done it, Bob? You're asking me. Yeah, but why here? In Carla's room. Sally wasn't killed in here, Chet. What? She'd been dead for hours when she was planted in that closet. Hours? What are you talking about? Uh, take a look at the body. Okay. Yeah. That could be rigor mortis. It is, Chet. I sent for Dr. Lang. He'll know more about the exact time she was killed. Yeah, sure. But I got a few ideas of my own. Sally was dead before we, before we pulled her out of the harbor. Say, wait a minute. You're going too fast for me. Yeah, that's right, Chet. Somebody, one of our little crowds, saw Sally first, and uh, that was the end of our Sally. Yeah, but why? And why park the body here after keeping it hidden for a whole day? Say, Bob, is somebody trying to frame Carla? That doesn't make sense. No, it's cockeyed. Why, everybody knows it. Carla and Sally were the best of friends. It was Carla who tried to keep the big romance going between Pete and Sally. That's why it doesn't make sense. Well, hey. Huh? It's just an idea, so don't breathe fire. You didn't ask Sally to join the party. I said I didn't. All right, all right. But how do you know Carla did? Ah, see, here, yeah, Chad. All right, just just to get her friend and Pete together again. Some people call it loyalty, you know. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Chad. All right. Now, suppose Kay found out what Carla had done, and she had visions of losing Pete to Sally. You know how she worked to take him away from her. So she tied a cord around her neck, huh? Well, I. Don't like to be the one to say so, Bob. And then drag the body from somewhere to this room? But there's nothing a woman likes less than being outsmarted by another woman. Okay, Chet. Will you ask Carla to meet me in the library in 20 minutes? All right, I'm sure. I'm going to wait here for Dr. Lang. Then I'm going to find out who started this thing and why. Bob! would it be? Carla. Oh, Carla, baby, what's the matter? On the library floor, Chet. It's Bob. He's been killed. Oh, holy. Uh, somebody run for a doctor, quick. Who did it, Carla? I don't know, Kay. I was going to meet him. Did you, sweetheart? Kay. It just occurred to me that Carla's quite a finder, for Cut it out, Kay. This is no time for comedy. No, Peter, just for murder. You're a fool, Kay. What reason would Carla have for killing Bob? One never knows, dear. There are so many reasons why a woman should kill a man, and one of them can be another woman. Oh, why don't you shut up and dry up? I'm only thinking about Sally. I wonder who took her along for the ride. Was it Bob? Let's get out of here, Kay. The boyfriend of the best friend. Huh. The oldest story in the world, you know. Pay no attention to her, Carla. Ever since she found Sally's handkerchief. Carla. I haven't heard a word she said, Phyllis. Uh -huh. If she only knew how little she means to me. Yeah. To pick on me at a time like Carla. this. Carla. It's all right. What? What's all right? Bob. Come here, honey. Bob. Oh, darling. You are all right. Well, not quite. I, I still have a headache. Oh, my darling. We've been so busy arguing about who killed you, I, I didn't think to look. That takes quite a lot to crack solid ivory, but somebody tried awful hard. Come on in, gang. You look pretty well, oh, considering. Well, we might as well all be together, even though it's not going to be a week. What happened, Bob? Well, I'm glad to see you're interested, Pete. Now, look. I should have done that when I opened the door. I would have seen who was waiting behind it with the Empire State Building in one hand. Kay seems to think it was Carla, Bob. So, so I heard and I was coming under the fog. The reasons were very interesting. Bob! Ah, relax, Carla. They were just interesting, not true. Well, shall we play 20 questions now? We shall. Chet, when you told Carla to meet me here in 20 minutes, who was present? Everybody? Yes. And then everybody disappeared. Yeah, I, I went to the billiard room. Alone, Bob? I went to my stateroom to rest. How about you, Pete? I, uh, I went for a walk on deck with Kay. Is that right, Kay? You don't think he's lying, do you? Well, it's possible that he isn't, but somebody is. How about you, Carla? You had 20 minutes to kill. 
I went to the game room, Kay. Why, of course. And the game room is right next to the lounge. Carla, were you able to see the stairway? I didn't see anyone go down, Bob. But then... Yeah? Well, I wasn't watching it. I was walking around. But the game room, dear, is where you play game. I've had enough of you, Kay. And everything that goes with you. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's going to be no hair pulling while I'm around. She's got no right to keep throwing mud at me, Chet. Yeah, I know. She I killed know. Sally and tried to kill Bob. And the more she tries to put the blame on me, the more I'm convinced all of it. All right. It's not Sally. all right at all. She's not going to call me a murderer. Stop it, Kay. Feet get her out of here. Nobody has to get me out. I'll see you all later. That means around dinner time, if I know Kay. I'm sorry about the rumpus, Bob. Okay, Pete. I think I'll go up to the bar and start drowning myself in the best liquor you've got. Either I'm crazy or this boat is jinxed. We start out on a cruise, the best of friends, and before the end of the day, we find that we're the worst enemies. Come on, Phyllis. Let's go up on deck and go haywire. I'm going to my cabin, Chet. What? I'm very tired. Oh. Okay. I'll go down to the boiler room and cool off. That cave. Ah, forget it, please. Carla, did you invite Sally on this trip? Did I what? <laughs> when you look surprised, honey, you're really beautiful. I'm not surprised, Bob. I'm angry. I had a lot of respect for Sally. You don't have to say another word. I'm convinced. But you thought of it. Oh, darling, I apologize. Now let's go and search all the cabins, including the empty ones. We might trip over something like a clue to the murderer. And then we'll know who's who and who paid her off. Well, if you're looking for clues, the best place to search is the clues closet. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up. Uh, from, uh, April 10th, 1947, The Crime Club on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. A break for your favorite station, and then the news from 75 years ago today is up. Here's some great news. If you missed the deadline to sign up for health insurance, or if you just have a plan you're not happy with, you still have a choice. It's called MediShare. There are hundreds of thousands of members, and they love it. MediShare has a 98% customer satisfaction rating, and this is obviously huge. The typical family saves around $6,000 a year switching to MediShare. Find out more. They're great to talk to. 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. You've heard me talking for over three years about my pillow and the great products they have. There's some great specials right now when you go to mypillow.com slash radio specials. You can find Giza Dream Sheets as low as $39.99. Six piece my pillow towel sets, deeply discounted. $39.95. And of course, half price my slippers, which make my feet feel wonderful. All sorts of great products, including the MyPillow mattress topper, a MyPillow for the rest of your body. Go to MyPillow.com slash radio specials. That's MyPillow.com slash radio specials. Use my promo code USA or you can call 1-800-951-8175. That's 1-800-951-8175. 8175 mypillow.com slash radio specials promo code USA. Thanks for tuning into this Sunday edition of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We're listening to an episode of The Crime Club as it was originally broadcast Thursday, April 10th, 1947. In the newspapers of that Thursday 75 years ago, these were some of the headlines. Long-distance workers in the American Telephone and Telegraph Company agreed last night on a basis for settlement of their part of the nationwide strike, offering new hopes for a general agreement soon. The basic agreement still must be submitted to the Policy Committee of the National Federation of Telephone Workers, which is directing the strike of those and other telephone workers across the nation. A demand by Secretary of State George C. Marshall that an international commission investigate and report on the future German-Polish frontier caused a major clash in the Big Four Foreign Ministers Conference last night. Angry assertions by Russian Foreign Minister Vladishev Molotov that the frontier was fixed finally at the Potsdam Conference caused Marshall and British Foreign Secretary Ernest Bevan to cite Premier Joseph Stalin to the contrary. 
President Truman yesterday looked into all angles of the nation's top economic problem, high prices, at a special meeting with his cabinet and high-ranking monetary advisors. The usual conference lasted an hour and 40 minutes. White House Press Secretary Charles G. Ross termed it purely exploratory. He said no plans of action were laid down and no effort was made to discuss any. The House Republican Steering Committee yesterday approved a sweeping strike control bill which would permit the federal government to obtain injunctions to prevent strikes for a 75-day period in industries affecting the public health or safety. The bill prepared by Republican members of the House Labor Committee under the direction of Chairman Fred A. Hartley Jr., the Republican of New Jersey. After weeks of bitter controversy, the Senate yesterday approved the appointment of David E. Lilienthal as head of the Atomic Energy Commission with broad powers over development and control of the atom bomb. The roll call 50 to 31. Besides being a personal triumph for the 47-year-old former chairman of the Tennessee Valley Authority, the vote a major victory for President Truman, he had flatly refused to listen to demands from many Republicans and some Democrats for withdrawal of the nominee. And though some of the day's top news stories is reported in the newspapers of Thursday, April 10th, 1947, on your radio, Mutual's Crime Club, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Where have you been for the last hour, Kay? Around. Pull up a deck chair, Peter, and make believe we know each other. I've been looking for you. How nice. I hope you weren't too disappointed when you peeped in my cabin. What was the idea, Kay? Oh? Did I have an idea? That lousy scene you made outside the library. Why did you accuse Carla? I don't like her. It was the dirtiest thing I ever listened to. But I'm very fond of you, Peter. And I wouldn't like to lose you to the hangman. What's that? (laughs) Oh, you're wonderful. Why don't we get married and end this beautiful romance? What did you mean, Kay, about the hangman? You killed Sally. Now listen. That's all right. I don't mind. I'm only sorry you didn't kill Bob Arnold, too. I don't know what you're talking about. But I do. After Chet told Carla to meet Bob in the library, we um, didn't go for a walk on the deck. You keep your mouth shut about that, Kay. But you said we did. And that wasn't the truth, was it, darling? If you say one word to Bob or anybody else... Well, you do. Kill me, too. Good grief! There, there. I'll keep your secret. But I tell you, Kay, I had nothing to do with this business today. I didn't know Sally was on board until you showed me that handkerchief. Your piccolo's out of tune. What are you but... trying to do? That's what I want to know. What are you trying to do? Sit down, sit down, and keep your temper. Because if I start screaming... <sighs> there, that's a good boy. I didn't kill Sally. No one will ever know from me. Would you like me to prove it? How? Well, a wife can't give evidence against her husband. You haven't got anything on me. Don't be silly. All I have to do is talk, and the only alibi you've got becomes a witness for the prosecution. Yes? Yes. Because whoever tried to kill Bob killed Sally. And for the sake of the record, the marriage record, I was with you on both occasions, protecting my future. Bob, we've been trotting around from cabin to cabin and I'm tired Only three more empties to go, Carla Sally must have been in one of them This is like hunting for a ghost And when it happens to be the ghost of your best friend This is it Luggage Sally's luggage It must be No one was checked into this room by me Bob What is it, Carla? I don't think I can go through with it Will you excuse me, please? Oh, sure, honey I should have thought of it myself you go up on deck and get some air. I'll look around here, and if I find anything interesting... What's the matter? Her handbag on the dresser. It's a funny position to leave a handbag in. Standing on end. That's a tip-off, Carla. There's something in it that Sally wanted us to find. What do you mean? She's a very smart girl, and she might have left her handbag this way so it'd be noticed. Bob, just before she was killed? Maybe she didn't know she was going to be killed. But she was frightened. She did some quick thinking. What's that you're reading? Good Lord, this is one thing I didn't expect to find. Well, what is it? A letter to Sally. Read it. I've made up my mind, so let's not mess things up. Stay off the gray mist. Chet. Chet? Yeah, of all people. Chet and Sally? And not a word to anybody. There's no doubt about it, Carla. That's his handwriting top to bottom. Uh, Al, there's only one thing to do. But we won't do it now. What? Phyllis. 
Not now, will we? Please give me that letter. I'll do nothing of the kind. Carla, don't be foolish. You're an old friend. And I'm very fond of you. You wouldn't dare use that gun. I would. I'm engaged to marry Chet. And if I have to shoot you to get that letter, I'll shoot you. There's no use arguing, Carla. Give it to her. But she'll destroy it. There's nothing we can do about it now. Give it to her. Well, all right. Thanks. I'll explain some other time. Bob, has she gone out of her mind? I don't know. But if sticking by your man means that you're out of your mind, then she is. Why, you sound as if you admire her. Me? <laughs> I don't even admire myself. Let's go upstairs. I'd like to have a chat with Chet. From 75 years ago, April 10th, 1947, The Crime Club on this Sunday, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Are you in bad pain? You know what I mean. Your knees hurt. Your shoulder hurts. Your elbow and back are constantly killing you. And I'm sure you've tried every pain pill or cream available at the drugstore. Am I right? Well, here's something you haven't tried. Pain Magic. Pain Magic is not available at any drugstore. The only place you can get it is by calling the special toll-free number I'm about to give you. And to make things even better, call right now and find out about our buy one, get one free offer. We're so confident it'll work for you that we offer a free bottle with your purchase. No prescription required. Call now to learn how you can get pain magic and get rid of your pain. Remember, your results may vary. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. That's 800-492-8164. On Monday's Classic Radio Theater, a special show. You know how much I enjoy science fiction. And this is one of those shows that came before the show that I originally fell in love with, which was X-1. And this is entitled Beyond Tomorrow. It was supposed to be CBS's first science fiction program. It aired uh, three episodes, April 5th, April 11th, and April 18th of 1950. So we're going back 72 years. And it only aired three episodes for one reason, and that is uh, uh, Dimension X came along and blew it out of the water, I guess. Uh, but that's really what happened. Anyway, uh, Beyond Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow from April 11, 1950, the Theodore Sturgeon story, Incident at Switch Path. That'll be on tomorrow's Classic Radio Theater. But now let's wrap up this Sunday show, Conclusion of the Crime Club, April 10th, 1947, The Gray Mist Murders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bob, this is the nicest bar I've ever been in. It's the cleanest, too. You ought to get a medal for it. Snap out of it, Chet. You're playing drunk. Sure, I'm playing. You and Carla say I'm a murderer, and that, that makes me want to play some more. <laughs> Where's the letter I'm supposed to have written? Phyllis took it away from us. Phyllis, huh? <laughs> ah, she's some girl. She's one in a billion. <laughs> And, you know, the days of the little millions are gone forever. <laughs> goodbye forever, goodbye forever. Bob, we'll never get goodbye. any present tonight. Won't we? Goodbye. Give me that pitcher of ice water. Goodbye, 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 Here, goodbye, Bob. goodbye. 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 Hey. That's cold. Not as cold as you're going to be if you don't start making sense. So what's, what's the big idea? We want to know about you and Sally. Me? Uh, what are you talking about? Don't you remember a thing we said to you? Well, you said it's... Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, a, a letter that Phyllis took. That you wrote to Sally, telling her to stay off this boat. Oh, no, Carla. I never wrote one word to Sally. Oh, you got to believe me. We found it in her handbag, Chet. And the handwriting was yours. Uh, you know what, Kitties? I think there's a lunatic on board. How about it, Chet? No, no, I mean it, Bob. Look, what happened? First, Sally's found in the closet of Carla's room. And then you're conked for no reason at all, and now then this letter of mine. Tell us about that, pal. But I didn't write it. I haven't seen it. But, but I can tell you it's a forgery. That's always convenient. No, Carla, I'm not lying, honest. Look, Bob, you, you know me for a long time. You know my handwriting. Could you imitate it? That's not the point, Chet. Well, could you or couldn't you? Ooh, yes, if I wanted well, to. Well, so could Colin, so could anybody. It's the easiest handwriting in the world to imitate. It, it's like a schoolboy's. Well, 
Will you get that letter from Phyllis? I'll try, if she's still got it. And I certainly hope she has. Bob, did he put one over on us? I don't know, Carla. I wonder. Hmm. Well, you want to be a detective. And you know, a good detective has to take lessons. Good lessons. Huh? Would you like to have a lemon fizz, darling? Or just a fizzle? Peter. Huh? Oh, Phyllis. Can you play billiards? I want to talk to you. All right. What about? I overheard what Kay said to you a little while ago. Snooping, huh? I didn't mean to, Peter. Let's go out on deck. I want you to understand one thing. When we get outside, Phyllis. Very well. Now, what do you want? The truth. You too. Bob and Carla found that letter in Sally's handbag. What letter? The one you wrote in Chet's handwriting after you killed Sally. Is this something new? There's no use denying it, Peter. You didn't want Sally to come on this boat. And when you found she was here, you killed her and tried to make it look as though Chet had done it. Who's got that letter now, Phyllis? I took it from Carla. I had to use force, but I took it. I'd like to see it. You can't. Why not? I destroyed it. Why, you dumb cluck. What did you do a thing like that for? There was going to be no evidence against Chet. No evidence against Chet. Or against you. Peter. Have you got any idea what you've done? Only one person had a reason for killing Sally and wanting to kill Bob. It wasn't Chet. No, no, who's talking about him? It was Kay. Kay? She thought Bob had invited Sally to make this trip. You saw what she did when she found that handkerchief. But she's not as smart as she thinks. She put on the mad act, but, but Sally was already dead and she killed her. But tonight, when she tried to put the blame on me... Peter, do you know what you're saying? What she said about me. Only this is the truth. I know it. All Kay wants is money and I have it. She charmed me away from Sally, made me think she loved me. I fell for her like a ton of saplings. But all she was angling for was money. But I always thought that Kay was well She out. hasn't got a dime. For the last two months, she's been gambling with my money. And I was going to ask her to marry me. <laughs> Today. <laughs> a triple wedding. Oh, oh, stop it. Stop it. What's the matter with you? Don't you believe me? No. All right. Let's form a posse. We'll beat through this boat till we find Kay. And then I'll make her tell the truth about everything, including murder. She's got to be in her cabin, Phyllis. She's nowhere else on this boat. But she doesn't answer, Peter. Ah, that's just her way of being cute. Well, I'm not waiting. See here, Kay. <gasps> oh, no. No. Just like Sally. We better get Bob. Remember, Phyllis, you were with me. Is she dead? Nobody ever looked like that and wasn't. <gasps> Come on, let's get Bob. <laughs> I think that's all, Mr. Arnold. Thank you, Dr. Lang. Will you take care of the details? I'm going into the library to join my, uh, friends. If you want me to make any chemical tests... I'll call you, or I'll bring the murderer to you. I think we've got all the evidence we need. I hope so, Mr. Arnold. Yeah. Bob. Sit down, Carla. Everybody sit down. Al Kay's been dead about an hour. Anybody have an alibi? No? Well, that's good, because I don't care about alibis this time. All I want is a show of hands. What do you mean, Bob? I want to see everybody's hands, Chet. What? What for? Have you got any reason not to show me yours? Well, no. <laughs> Here, look at them. I just watched them 15 minutes ago. Both sides, Chet. Okay. Up. Down. <laughs> do I pass? How about you, Pete? Well, I don't mind if this is a new way to tell fortunes. It is. The kind of fortune that ends with, I now pronounce sentence of death. You're next, Phyllis. May I see your hands, please? All right. I wish I knew why. Carla? Yes, Bob? Your hands. Here. Don't worry. You won't find any blood on mine. I wasn't looking for blood, exactly. What were you looking for? I don't understand. Someone in this room is a murderer, a strangler. And Dr. Lang found the evidence that should convict. What evidence, Bob? Pieces of skin, Pete, under two of Kay's fingernails. She scratched her killer and she... I reach for your neck, Phyllis. Well, no reason. I was just going to loosen my scarf. Why don't you take it off? Isn't it sort of warm in here? 
I'll just loosen it. What are you hiding? The heart. Hey, you got one heck of a nerve. Give her back that scar. Okay, Chad, after she explains those two scratches on she the side of her neck. She doesn't have to explain anything to I'm you. I'm afraid she does to all of us. How did you get those scratches on your neck, Phyllis? Bob, leave her alone. You've got them while you were twisting the cord around Kay's neck, didn't you? She reached up while you were standing behind her and clawed at you, trying to get hold of your hair so she could pull your head down. Isn't that right, Phyllis? You've got no proof. So that's what you want. All right. Dr. Lang has a skin that came off that neck. He's ready to make any test he has to. He's not going to make any test, Bob. You're a lick, Phyllis. That gun can't help you now. <laughs> Why doesn't somebody try to take it away from me? <laughs> Phyllis. Oh, no. Yes. Why doesn't somebody try? Because you all want to live. You too, Chet. <laughs> Even now. <laughs> oh, Phyllis, why did you do it? I hated them both. But Kay more than Sally, because she was going to marry Peter. What? Are you kidding? No, Chet. I never love you. You just pestered me. And I... Did you know I tried to get rid of you, too? I wrote that letter to Sally. Right after I killed her. And then I fixed everything so that it would be found. That was smart of me, wasn't it? Phyllis. <laughs> Don't be foolish, Bob. Don't come too close. I had everything planned. Kay was going to disappear tonight. And after a while, Peter, you wouldn't have cared. I was going to show you how much I loved you. <laughs> oh, we've got to do something. She'll kill us all. <laughs> Sit tight, Peter. But I, I made a mistake. And it was just as well. Bob told me to take cabin G. I thought he said D. And there was Sally. Would you like to know what she told me? Of course, Phyllis. She said she came on board to take Peter away from Kay. Nobody knew she was there. I promised to keep her confidence. And when she turned round to unpack... Why did you put her body in my room? Sally couldn't be dead without being seen, Carla. And your room was so close. Just across the hall. Well, why did you try to frame me, Phyllis? I never did anything to you. Didn't you? You kissed me and I hated you. That was a mistake, too. I didn't realize it until I heard Kay talking to Peter, accusing him of the murder. Then I knew that you had no reason to kill Sally. But Peter did. And if I could convince him, the way that Kay was trying to convince him, that he couldn't live without marrying me, I could... <laughs> All right, Pete. Wait! <laughs> get the lights on! Sorry, get the lights on! Yeah. What? Oh, Phyllis. She's killed herself. No, Carla. It's just a flesh wound. But she'll never have another chance to kill anybody, including herself. And so closes tonight's crime club book, The Grey Mist Murders, based on a story by Constance and Gwynth Little. Stedman Coles did the radio adaptation. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Sidney Smith played Robert Arnold. Helen Shields was Phyllis Marsh. Sherling Oliver was Peter Condit. Joan Alexander was Kay Bayliss. Elaine Kent played Carla Bray. And Chet Stratton was Chester Gordon. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have the very exciting story of a portrait in black that became a study in murder. It's called Death Cuts a Silhouette by D.B. Olson. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there's a new crime club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we look for you next week. April 10th, 1947, The Crime Club on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Would you do me a favor and thank this radio station and support their advertisers? It is their kindness and courtesy that allows us to be with you each and every time we roll around here, each and every Sunday on your favorite station. 
And if you miss a day on this station, you do not have to miss a show. We produce 21 hours a week of some of the greatest classic radio theater programs of all time. You can find them through iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, or even Facebook. Just search for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. That's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Or through my webpage, ClassicRadio.stream. You can stream our shows on demand, learn about building a classic radio collection of your own. You can find our social media links and contact me there. Classic radio.stream and tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. That's me here on your favorite radio station. 